Good day, everyone. I'm your host, Lee Judge, and welcome to today's webinar entitled Jakarta Multi-Channel Agent Desktop for Avaya Aura Call Center Elite Multi-Channel, brought to you by Jakarta. As a note, to honor the privacy of our attendees, only your name will appear in the attendee window. Our presenter today is Steve Herlocker, Chief Marketing Officer at Jakarta. Today, we will look at how the new Jakarta Multi-Channel Agent Desktop enhances Avaya EMC, We'll also look at and discuss how to enhance and reap the benefits of its high usability, increased productivity, and low-cost implementation. Following the presentation, there will be a question and answer session, so please feel free to type your questions into the Q&A window at any time. Also, once again, as a note, only your name will appear in the attendees window. So let's begin. The presentation is all yours, Steve. Thank you, Lee. Good day, everybody. So today we're pleased to announce a new product offering from Jakarta, the multi-channel agent desktop. I think for those of you that don't know Jakarta, I mean, we've been a leader in the unified desktop space, creating optimal agent desktops for over a decade now. And we've worked with Avaya for quite a few years. Um, we've been good partners. So today, really what we're talking about is a new product that really focuses on bringing value to the Aura Call Center Elite multi-channel product. So those of you that are on the webinar, most likely you're looking at blending agents. Most likely you're familiar with that platform. Um, certainly we know it's a great product. It's you know, a great addition to the Elite Call Center product, and it's a great way to bring multi-channel into the environment. And it's something that we've been working closely with Avaya on in terms of how can we make it even easier to adopt. So I think uh, just to understand, we've been working with Avaya for about five, five and a half years now. And for the last year and a half, we've been what's called a select product partner um, of Avaya. And what that means is, that for many countries in the world, you can actually purchase the products we're talking about directly from Avaya. So you can work with, uh, with Jakarta, you could work with Avaya, it's really your choice. So it's a great product. We've come out with a great product to enhance the value in, uh, associated with it. So let's talk about that today. And I think first, you know, let's talk a little bit about the challenge with moving to blending and moving to a unified environment, right? I think everybody here understands the reasons to do it in terms of unifying your agents and creating this universal agent, if you will. But I think the challenge that we see is you know, mainly answered by bringing together a, a nice solution like the Elite Multi-Channel and having it work so closely with Elite. But there is still some challenge on the agent desktop in terms of retraining. There's some challenge in terms of migrating off of existing platforms. Um, you know, what do I do to keep the knowledge that I had in my existing chat system and how do I migrate that? How do I handle that bump to the agent, if you will? And some of what we hear is, you know, it's too disruptive to move now. There's benefit, um, but there's also cost and there's risk, and we're not sure we want to do that. So what we've really targeted is how do we help mitigate that and how do we help make this a seamless transition and bring some additional value um, that will end up making that decision much easier and much more seamless for you. So, you know, Avaya has a good desktop. Why Jakarta, right? Why, why would we come in and solve this problem? And, I, you know, I alluded to it a little bit in the sense that, you know, as Jakarta and being the unified desktop provider, we certainly know how to minimize the bump and create uh, great usability for agents, minimize that risk in transferring uh, between providers, transferring desktops, dealing with multiple, you know, content sources, great knowledge bases I might have, et cetera. And so we bring that value into the environment. Excuse me, the slides moved on their own here. And so Jakarta can certainly come in and provide the ability then uh, to create a seamless transition there, and we'll show you how in today's discussion. Um, the current uh, Elite Multi-Channel Desktop is a fat client, and that works well for some, but others are looking for maybe a lighter way to answer, and we've got a good answer to that. And then we've also got some experience because of our background in, in the unified desktop space and the additional capabilities we have. Yet we have the ability to create a better agent experience and make them more efficient, you know, drive some more accuracy into the processes that they do, basically save you some additional costs, uh, make you more compliant, make the agents more trackable and auditable. There are a lot of different things there. So what is it? Um, here's a quick screenshot of it, and we'll walk through it today. So in today's discussion, I will go through the desktop itself, um, the capabilities on it, and then I'll walk you through a quick video demonstration of it to show you in, in action. Um, we'll talk a little bit about what the deployment looks like, and then we can move on to some questions after that. But as you can see, a nice, highly usable uh, web-based desktop. It's very, very quick to, to install. Um, this is something that in 
you know, lab type environments. We've done a one hour install completely integrated with the Elite Multi Channel environment. Um, and it's highly usable. You know, there's a lot of experience Jakarta brings to the table in terms of how to use information, how to manage customers and, and manage the different questions that they have, how do I deal with multiple clients at the same time, um, a number of these types of things. In, net, in the net net, you know, what is the benefit to me? Why would I look at this? Um, we'll talk about a capability called that we call multi-context, and it's an ability really to deal with multiple customers at the same time, and everything is pretty much one click away for you. Um, it makes it much more efficient and much less disruptive from an agent perspective. Of course, that saves time, but it also makes the agent able to talk to the customer and have a conversation with them about their business, their challenge, their pain, whatever it may be. Um, Again, I mentioned earlier, it is thin client, uh, which will drive, in many cases, a lower total cost of ownership. And certainly, uh, it can be easier to administer if you're working with outsourcers, uh, if you have work from home agents, that kind of thing. Um, it can be easier to deploy in certain scenarios. Um, we also have underneath this, because this is really a simplified version of our full unified desktop that we call Workspace, it does have a full roles and privileges infrastructure within it. And that will help us control access to information, maybe control the view that a supervisor might have of different agents, these types of things, which can give you a better view into, um, into complex environments. It can, you know, and therefore create better adherence. Um, it can provide a little better security in that sense, and so maybe works better in the sensitive data type environments, those types of things. Um, talked about the easy installation process. Uh, it's one of the key goals of this was to make it you know, essentially a two or three click install product. Um, and in the base package that I'll show you first, that is exactly what we achieved. And then of course we have initial add-on capabilities I mentioned that come from Jakarta that is our history of providing these optimized uh, agent desktop environments and, and providing the next best action for the agent, guiding them through a flow, automating call dispositions, these types of things. So we'll talk about that in a bit more detail, but in the end, essentially what it comes down to is something that should save you money, make you more compliant, and make you a bit easier to manage the agents and manage the agent environment. Okay, so we'll go through and talk about the features. Um, this is a very high level view just to put it all in context. Again, we like to talk about the high usability of the desktop. We work with a lot of usability engineers to make sure that this is an optimal layout um, and it works very well when you're dealing with a lot of information and a lot of different customers at the same time. So the first thing is the bar over here on the left, which is that multi-context view. It's dealing with all the different data and, and customers that I'm working with at one time. This is the quick one-click tab to get where you need to go next to get right back to where you left off. And again, I'll go into that in more detail in a second. Of course, there's my agent status and the, and the um, customer screen pop and customer information. You know, that would be necessary, of course, in a desktop to be able to control as an agent what I'm doing. There is the typical media toolbar, um, and that will react to the type of media that I'm dealing with. There's the history information. So there's the customer detail history in terms of the current interaction and what I know about that customer and there's notifications about that customer that's coming in, and then there's that customer's interaction history and every interaction I've had with them through time, um, and that information all is coming directly from the Elite Multi-Channel System. And finally, in the base edition of this, and in the base capability, there's an auto disposition portlet, and I'll talk about that in, in more detail as well, uh, but it's really guided towards giving you some uh, automated tracking of what's happening in the flow on the desktop, what the agent's doing, and helping them with the annotation at the end of the call and the disposition of the call appropriately. So quickly we'll walk through this. Um, we'll go through it one by one and then I'll do the demo and show you the actual platform itself. So the multi-context view. This is the context of an agent working multiple items in parallel. You know, certainly I think you see here on the little tab a chat and an email open at the same time. Um, but the concept is that as an agent has to integrate and work with multiple customers and multiple backend systems like their workforce management system, et cetera, there's a lot of confusion on the desktop and there's a lot of applications. So we create sort of a home area for the agent here that's all the things they need to do between calls, between shifts, the different tasks they may have to follow up on, 
message of the day type of information, that kind of thing. So that's the, the resting place or landing page for them where they can you know, catch up and, and stay organized for the day and, and know what's happening in the environment. And then as individual interactions come in, each one is categorized and all the information with each interaction is, is captured underneath it. So for example, if I had a CRM system open along with this and, and popped into that CRM system, there would be a little sub-tab here for that CRM system. Uh, if I had a billing system, like, likewise. So maybe Mary here in this chat has a billing system, her billing line would show there. And so now the agent really is one click away from shifting between interactions, but getting right back to where they left off the conversation with the customer. So I could be in that CRM application here on the application email, and then I need to switch back to the chat because I see it's blinking and there's, there's a need to respond to it. I could click directly on the billing app and be right where I left off in the chat conversation and ready to answer that question that just came in. So it's, it's all about making an extremely usable environment and managing that information overload the agent has when they have multiple customers and multiple systems they need to work with. So that's our concept of multi-context, and that's something that we bring in terms of a, a usability on top of the desktop, on top of that core elite multi-channel product. And then, of course, there's the basic capabilities, receiving calls, chats, emails. Um, really, of course, it's what you would expect. This is a call control toolbar when we're dealing with calls. It has all the common capabilities laid out in a nicely usable manner. Uh, I think what's to note is there's a slightly different layout on the screen for each different media type you're handling because there's a different usability need in each scenario. So in a voice scenario, I have a particular layout that will include a, a guidance portlet or a single view of the customer portlet because the agent has to be much more real-time in terms of how they respond. So you'll see here that there's the, you know, the main screen area and the main guidance for the agent is dedicated towards information about the customer and guiding that agent through what they need to do step by step. And as we talk about additional capabilities and you start using that call control toolbar, as you do transfers and conferences, they're all very configurable. So out of the box, there are some default configurations that are easy to set up and easy to use. Um, but as you get into more complex environments, if you want to start giving the agent very dedicated lists of information or de dedicated guidance, you can configure that. And that can, can be configured by call type. It can be configured by the role of the agent or by the seniority of the agent. I mean, you really can use whatever trigger you want, but you can start to show them only the information that's relevant, only the people they should be transferring to or the extensions they should be transferring to for that call type. And of course, you can give them all the options like direct dialing, et cetera. And similar, similar, similarly, in conferencing, um, you can do the same type of thing. There's a pick list to choose who to conference with, and you can configure who's visible in that list, again, based on call type, based on role, agent skill, et cetera. So we try to make everything um, always in context. You know, you're only seeing a conference menu and you're only seeing conference options when it's appropriate. You're only seeing the people you need to conference with. Um, everything on the screen will then adjust to deal with that conference if we need to. Um, so if it's a barge and a supervisor management scenario, they would have a different view than an agent, um, per se, in a conference because they're trying to achieve different things and they have different goals and they may need different tools. So again, it's all about creating that optimal environment to make the agent efficient. From an email perspective, again, of course, now when I receive an email, I have a different set of options available to me. Um, I do receive notifications that there's an inbound email coming in, just like you would with Outlook um, or any other type of uh, productivity management tool. So again, we try and focus on making the environment seamless and comfortable and, and make it look like something the agents are already used to using to minimize that training and adoption time. And then again, from an email perspective, we'll have a little bit different layout. Um, we will pull in all the content you know, with the templates from the Elite Multi-Channel multi Platform. And when I spoke earlier about that bump in terms of moving systems, we can certainly also bring content in from other environments. So that may be a knowledge base that you have. It's a third-party knowledge base that you'd love to get integrated in and, and make that part of my templated answers. Or it may be another email system that you're migrating off of and you don't want to have to try and migrate the content at the same time you're migrating the agents and retraining them. So it's all part of that, how do I make this a seamless experience? How do I transition people smoothly? And very similarly in the chat environment, as we switch slides. 
Oh, I'm sorry. We can also, of course, reply to emails, utilize the templates to do that, um, and there's a number of productivity tools to make that useful. Um, you'll see in action how that templating works and how it's organized. On the receiving chats front, same thing. Again, slightly different layout because in a chat it's a semi-real-time type response, so we do dedicate some, some screen area for templated responses, but also maybe for some customer information and a quick view of who the customer is. So it's all that, again, usability and presenting what's needed at the right time um, to make that agent efficient. So I mentioned that we do a dispositioning and a dispositioning portlet, if you will. This environment is really targeted towards narrowing down and shortening the after-call work, removing errors from it, and making that information more trackable and auditable. So in this environment, you know, Basically, we will capture automatically the default interaction information, write those into standardized notes for the agent, things like the interaction start time, um, the fact that you verified the customer, you know, the basic steps that are occurring in the call that the agent would probably have to document anyway. Those are certainly editable by the agent, but it gives them a, a fixed starting point. It gives you some consistency in the noting. And we also let you set the ability to um, choose an auto disposition for them, again, based on interaction type, based on what they did on the screen, you can, you can trigger that and choose what that disposition should be. That way you can start to avoid agents always choosing the first disposition code. At least you're giving them you know, a reasonably good starting point and then hopefully they'll refine that disposition code and, and give you the right answer. Um, but all this is targeted towards, again, increased usability, and shortening the time it takes to do the annotation and getting better quality out of it. There's a favorites menu. Um, this is part of the sort of day-to-day -day tasks area I showed you before on the context menu. And this can be, again, driven by context, and it really can be showing any type of information you want. It can be internal FAQ sites, could be a UPS shipping site if that made sense, uh, can be another system that they might use. Some, you know, maybe it's workforce management and they have to put in, and, uh, put in break information or they need to go in and put in a request for a vacation or something like that. Um, but there's an ability to create a quick links area then to quickly get make them one step away from any other third-party system content you need, but keeping it in the context of the desktop and keeping track of the fact that they used it and how long they used it. Again, we can audit what the agents are doing, we can track what's happening, and you can start to you know, know that they're spending a lot of time in you know, the company overview or in the FAQ page that you've created for them on um, you know, best practices, that kind of thing. So you can start to track time utilization and, and adherence um, to process inside the call. And then finally, you know, we pull through that customer history, um, and talk about the capabilities in the, in the base product, if you will. We are pulling through the, you know, all the data that is stored in the Elite Multi-Channel Platform. So we have that full customer history. We do let you go in there, uh, configure how much they will see, how many days back in history, that kind of thing, how many entries per page. You can also go in and uh, pull up those and then add them, add notes to them, change them, et cetera. You're not going to change the core interaction information, but you can add additional notes that maybe this was a, the current interaction the agent's dealing with is in response to this call that I had 10 days ago, and that can help you track you know, FCR and these types of things. So the agents can go in and update those and have that one click away. And then there's some optional capabilities we have on top. These are not necessarily part of the, the one-click install, if you will, but they are things that work um, quite well to bring a lot of uh, additional capability to the agents and save a lot of time. So we have what we call scripting or scripting module. Um, that is a plugin that we can enable. And if you do that, you know, it's something that we have product managers, we have second-level support agents, trainers. They're going into this interface you see here, and they're creating the guidance for the agent. And it's not necessarily the scripting that you're used to that forces somebody step by step to say something. It's really giving them guidance at the important points in the call so that they know where to go for information. They have that next piece of information. Um, they're given some guidance in the tough points. Maybe it's objection handling in a sales process. You know, maybe it's compliance for an insurance policy about what they can underwrite and what's not underwritable. But it's all about giving that agent, when they get to the hard part of the conversation, the next step to move them forward in the conversation. It's a nice design environment. Um, it's, it brings the ability for people to really create these flows, test them in real time, and see what that experience will be like. 
and then publish them up into the platform and make them live for the agents. Um, so it's very dynamic, very agile, uh, not required certainly in all scenarios, but can be very useful in things like tech support, sales, um, it, you know, configuration, high bill type questions, those types of environments. Another optional capability we can plug in is what we call our integrated knowledge portlet. Um, this is something where you probably already have more than one source of truth in the environment. You probably have a knowledge base. You most likely have an internal website that has information on it and probably a list of documents out there, whether PDFs, Excel files, whatever they are. And the agents have to know and you have to train them that they need to go to all these different environments. Uh, that can be challenging and they cannot always choose the best data source. So we've created this capability where we will go integrate with all those different environments and we'll bring up a single view of that content to the agent. And again, we can configure it to know that as you see here, the agent's in a billing call and we know who they're talking to and what type of customer it is. So we can pre-filter that content and make sure that agent really only sees the top three, top five results that are applicable to exactly what they're dealing with now. The customer, the type of, of question they've got, the type of agent they are, et cetera. So again, this is an add-on capability that we can bring in uh, and we can certainly configure it to work with your existing, uh, your existing knowledge and content and make sure that that's always available. And finally, you know, the last real uplift piece that we have here is we call our dashboard builder. Um, and this is what will let you build a single view of the customer, if you will, a billing view, a, a quick customer history that shows maybe flags and say if they're past due. Uh, you know, if they are due for an upgrade or their service is going to expire in a month. You know, these are, this is an area where you can give an enhanced screen pop to the agent that really shows them a 360 view of that customer and what they're doing. Or it could be bringing in compliance data. You could build a portlet that would show uh, an agent how they're performing against the queue or against their group, um, how the group is performing against goals, et cetera. So it's an environment where the business can go in and drag and drop data around, relate it to each other, graph it, put it in tables. It's a very quick, a very, very quick environment to build these views that can remove the need to go to a number of different third-party systems. Maybe you have a system an agent goes to once a month, you know, once a week, but you have to train them on it. Great, you can now bring that data that they might need once in a while into one of these views and they never have to be trained, they never have to go to that system. Or if there's flags that can drive your business, like I said, compliance flags or upsell opportunities, you can create those and make sure they're front and center and the agent is one click away from then getting on with the most important business with that customer, so selling them something, getting them current on their account, et cetera. So that's a powerful tool. Again, it's something that we give typically to business analysts to, to build these views and then assign them to different call types or different agent groups. And they become available um, pretty much on the fly. So, a good agile environment to provide information to the agents. All right, with that, I'm going to switch over here quickly and show you what it looks like in action. We'll step through this fairly quickly. Um, so this is the environment and I'm going through and logging in as an agent. If there's any message of the day or anything I must notify the agent about, fire alarm notices, training sessions, et cetera. You can have them show up at the beginning of the session. They can also show up during the session and alert the agent. So the agent goes in, of course, goes ready. At this point, I have that information before we get this email. I have that you know, starting set of information I told you about to start the day with. Um, here, we're starting the agent with no messages. Um, if there had been a message of the day, they would see that. And I now have an email coming in. I take that email, you can see that the context has changed in the bar, I'm now dealing with an email, the layout has changed to deal with the email. I have the history, I'm looking through and seeing that there's interactions, you know, the person has chatted with us in the last few days and 10 or 20 days ago they called us. I can pull up that data um, if I need to, if not I can reply to the email. And now I'm just one click away from a full list of templates and this is where I talked about the ability to bring templates from the Elite Multi-Channel Platform as well as bring in templates from maybe third party sources and I can start to integrate that content and create this holistic environment. So the agent goes through and starts editing this email and editing the email response. It's a fairly straightforward request about loan information. How do I start a loan process? So I can answer that with templates, just trying to show you a very basic interaction here. And while I'm doing that, I have an incoming chat, right? And this, you know, this is your mythical universal agent that handles chat, email, and voice. So we'll see that evolve throughout this. 
uh, the chat comes in. I accept that chat. I'll now switch over and I'll see that Joe Smith has come up and Joe has a bit more information, right? And I immediately start with that chat. I use a canned response. And multi-chat would lay out in tabs here if you want to see multiple chats open at the same time. So Joe is asking about a fraudulent activity. Um, we're going through now and saying, okay, to verify fraud, I need you to identify yourself. And there was an ID and V process. We now have a quick view we built with that dashboard builder, builder that shows the recent account activity. Since this was a fraud type of interaction and, and um, you know, Joe had notified us of that on the front end when he opened the chat, we went and built this dashboard and pulled up recent account activity so that it's one click away and now the agent knows what's happening in that account. And by the way, I'm North State Bank. I think I forgot to mention that. We can see the transaction. We can confirm. Uh, we come back and say, you know, this is the charge that we found to be fraudulent. It was this charge uh, from a, a gas station in Hanover, Germany. Joe comes back and says, never been to Germany. So we close out that transaction, you know, apologize for the, uh, the bump on their, on their account. And then we go through and disposition the call. Um, and in this case, we're not doing auto dispositioning. The agent will go ahead and, and type in the notes, but you're again, all the info is right there to cut and paste across and do that with. So we close out the chat interaction, go back to start answering the email, and we have a phone call come in, and we get notified of a voice call coming in at this point. <clears throat> now you notice a drastically different layout. So the voice call comes in, and I actually have quite a bit of room now dedicated to guiding the agent through this call and giving them information. And I also have different context down here for this voice call that you'll see how we use in a minute. So the call comes in, the person identifies themselves, and we've pulled up again one of these dashboard views. And this is an example of presenting some history data, some recent account activity of the person, a flag that they are past due on their auto loan. So it's a red flag notifying the agent that there is a challenge with the account. And that is what the person is calling about right now. And it gives a quick summary of their accounts here, what the accounts are, what the balances are. So as the person identifies that they are calling in about the loan and, and paying the loan, the first thing we have to do is, is do an identification validation sequence. So we will walk you through and, and help the agent go through a validation sequence here, make sure they ask the right questions in the right order. Maybe they give the customer options if there are options. And since we know we're moving into a discussion about a payment, we, we show the current account balance. We then walk through and do the payment process. So there's several more steps in the flow as we walk the agent through the account that we're going to work with, taking the payment, et cetera. So we finish that interaction. We've auto dispositioned this call and we've cre auto created some notes down here based on the fact that we identified the person and we've um, gone ahead and done their payment for them. We close out that call and now we go back and we finish the email. So that's just a quick view of what it may look like in action. Um, this gives you a demonstration of the different layouts, some of the different tools in action, the different information that we have, and how you can work with multiple customers at a time in that environment. So again, just try to make it very efficient for the agent to handle multiple people and, and very quickly switch back and forth between these contexts, if you will. So we'll go back to the presentation at this point. Um, just a few more points to make. And then we'll go on to questions. So the product itself, um, we do work, of course, closely with the Avaya infrastructure. And it is a standard Avaya, uh, in this case, an Avaya Elite with an Avaya Elite call center, sorry, with the Avaya Elite multi-channel added on with it. Um, we now have our component tree. It runs, this is basically a web application. It's a Java web application. Runs on a, a web server and an application server. And we integrate closely with the Elite Multi-Channel Interface to look like the Elite Multi-Channel Desktop. So from an architectural perspective, Elite Multi-Channel thinks there's a desktop there and thinks it's the same desktop it's used to working with. We take that from a web server perspective and push it over uh, a browser out to the agent and give them that basically thin client experience. So zero install on the desktop, web-based access, uh, typical app server type of deployment. You know, don't mean to get too technical on this call but um, you know, is a highly scalable and again, fairly easy to install and configure type of environments. 
All right. So we have uh, about 10 minutes, I think, left. We'll take a few questions. But I think first, you know, getting started, we've tried to make this very easy. Like I said, it's a, a very easy package to install and try. So certainly contact us um, if you have interest. You can also contact your AVI representative, and they'll know how to get in contact with us as well. And again, you know, the point of this really is to try to make it easier for you to make that migration to a blended environment and get that universal agent and get the benefits of that universal agent and minimize the risk of, of moving there. So hopefully we've showed you how we do that and we've given you some good insight to that and I thank you all for your time. At this point I'll hand it to Lee and see if we have any questions. Okay, thank you for your valuable insights on Jakarta Multi-Channel Agent Desktop, Steve. Um, due to the high participation in this webinar, we will answer as many questions as possible from the Q&A window, and the remaining we will respond to individually after the event. We have several questions, so we'll get to as many as possible. Uh, we'll go now to the Q&A window and answer the ones that are already typed in there. Uh, Steve, the first one I see here says, I see that it mirrors the EMC functionality in a lightweight client, but can you do more of things you typically find in a unified desktop? So yes. Um, again, we've tried to package this so that there's a very quick and easy install and out of the box it provides value and does a number of things. But it is the same framework and underlying it is our, our full workspace framework that is our full unified desktop. So I gave you a bit of a taste of that today showing some scripting, showing a um, little bit of this building of dashboards and single views. Uh, certainly, if there's a need, we can also work deeply with existing apps and do some of the desktop integration and create optimized process flows, uh, you know, audit and work with your, rep your recording system to trigger when to start and stop recording for compliance reasons, these kinds of things. Um, so we absolutely can take control of the whole desktop and you could step up and, and start to optimize more and more and you can do that call type by call type. Uh, but out of the box, the basic is, is meant to be a good starting position and a quick and easy to adopt without a lot of configuration and a lot of time. Okay, great. Uh, another question we have here says, does it, does it have tie-up with CRM applications like Siebel or Salesforce? Um, yes. So again, we didn't show a lot of that in this webinar because we're trying to show the very, very lightweight deployment. Um, but certainly, as I just said, we can absolutely work with Siebel, we can work with Salesforce, Zendesk, um, pretty much anything. We specialize in working with even third-party applications that you've created in-house. Uh, and if you want to just screen pop those, that's quite easy to do. Um, you can embed them in a tab and, and have them popped into context. Uh, we have multiple instances of those. So I talked about how we can have uh, Mary, who started a chat, and Mary's history record up in the CRM system. I could also have Joe with the email and have a different view into the CRM for Joe and have both of those open at the same time, but only showing at the appropriate time when I'm looking at Joe, I see Joe's context. So there's a lot we can do to work with different applications even beyond CRM. Can be billing, um, inventory if you're in retail, um, order management systems if you're in telco, policy systems and insurance companies. It's absolutely one of the things we do well, um, and it's one of those things that uh, goes with that last question. Those are optimizing and integrating with those are things that we do in a bit more of a unified desktop type environment. Okay, great. Um, the next question says, uh, they, they ask, I want to understand is there additional opportunities for creating desktops for supervisors and other heads of call center? So yes, and in fact, um, in, in more of the unified desktop type environments where you're doing a bit more process optimization, it's even common for us to have maybe a point of sale desktop or a field service desktop view as well, not just you know, supervisor versus agent. Um, didn't go into the depth today and show some of the supervisor capability. There is a corresponding supervisor view that has a bit more access. You can see the agents in your group. You can see their activity. Uh, you have a few more capabilities to take control of agents, that kind of thing. So out of the box, there is a supervisor view. And then with all the additional capabilities I showed you, you certainly could build dashboards that are specific to supervisors. So you could have a quality management view that showed the current performance of your agent group. And you could embed that in the desktop as an example. So there is quite a bit of ability to customize that, and you could even create different layouts, different views by agent group or call type or you know, media type as appropriate. Excellent. Uh, the next question says, how do you make a business case for spending more for another desktop? Yeah, so, uh, you know, it's a good question because in the existing environment, you know, the Elite Multi-Channel desktop comes with the platform and it does a good job of working with Elite Multi-Channel. 
I think what we've shown you today is we're really trying to go the next step and we're trying to bring a lot of additional value to that environment. So I'm trying to shorten the call um, by giving the agent better guidance and better insight. I'm trying to uh, shorten that after call work with the disposition portlets, um, make them a little bit more productive with the multi-context view, that kind of thing. So there's certainly a lot of benefit and value we bring that shortens call time, shortens training time, shortens after call work and all that together um, will drive quite a bit of value into this and make it more than worth the time to uh, take a look at us and take a look at the our add-on desktop, if you will. Okay. Well, the next question has to do with, I think, one of your slides that mentioned uh, histories. Uh, the question says, is that history from the EMC repository or from a Jakarta repository? So what you saw in the demo today, all of the content, both the, te the email templates, the chat templates, the customer contact history, was all coming from the Elite Multi-Channel Database. Um, we can, again, also pull in data from multiple sources and mix it together, but what you saw today was the quick out-of-the-box install that automatically integrates with EMC and pulls up all that history from the EMC database. Okay, great. Uh, we have, a, I guess, a security question here. The question says, can the client browser connection to the server via HTTP be secure via SSL? Um, yes. Okay. Uh, let's see. The next question here is, um, what is the Actually, license? Actually, I'll, I'll answer a few more of the common questions around the infrastructure piece. Uh, yes, it installs in virtual machines. Yes, it can be hosted in a managed service data center. Um, you know, yes, we work in highly secure environments. We've deployed in, in banks, telcos, healthcare institutions. Um, so we are familiar typically with a lot of the enterprise type requirements in terms of security, auditing, compliance, um, platform management, all those kinds of things. You know, I'd love to talk to everybody about that. Okay. Uh, next question says, are disposition codes and notes written back to EMC? Yes, they're put back into the contact history database by default, um, and that's where they're stored by default. But again, if you have a need to also put that into CRM or store it in CRM instead, we certainly could do that, um, and we can configure the system to do that as well. Okay. Uh, lots of great questions today. Uh, the next one says, can the agent handle multiple types of interactions at the same time? Yes. So I showed you a chat and an email open at the same time, and then we closed the chat and opened a voice call. Um, you can also handle multiple chats at the same time, and they basically show up as additional contexts on that left-hand navigation menu. Now, one of the questions I'll commonly get is, so is Jakarta changing the rules here? Are they enabling the agent to do more than I want them to do or, or I would configure for them to do inside the Elite Multi-Channel Platform? No. I, it's still the Elite Multi-Channel Platform deciding what interactions are allowed to send to the agent and when to send them to the agent. I'm just making it more efficient to deal with multiple interactions when they come in. So the routing rules and the concurrency rules are all still configured and set within the Elite Multi-Channel Platform. All right. Uh, the next question says, what is the licensing or pricing model? So it's per concurrent agent, um, and we have a base package that I talked about that we've tried to make very, um, you know, very easy to adopt uh, in a fairly low price point. And then we have some of these optional add-on components like the guidance and the, the, um, uh, the, the dashboard building, et cetera, the integrated knowledge base capabilities. So we've tried to make it, again, easy to adopt and then easy to step up towards this full unified desktop capability. But the, the core license model is per concurrent agent. Okay, we're going to um, get to our last question here to respect the time of, uh, to respect our attendees' time and get them back to their busy days. Uh, Steve, the last question we have here uh, is what are the system requirements? Yeah, so I think I touched on that a little bit. Um, it is a Java application server. We do tend to run on most of the common platforms. So from an operating system perspective, Linux or Windows. Um, and then from an application server perspective, all the common ones, IBM, Oracle, uh, and Apache uh, as application server environments. And again, can be a virtualized environment or can be dedicated servers, however you'd like to manage that. And then from the agent requirements, um, it is just a browser on the agent desktop, and we work with a number of the common browsers. So um, shouldn't be a big bump from an agent desktop perspective, doesn't require a lot of resource from an agent desktop perspective. So it's just a browser connection. Um, and then if we're doing the security, maybe a little bit of configuration of that browser on the agent desktop. 
Excellent. Well, this concludes our webinar today on Jakarta Multi-Channel Agent Desktop. Thanks again to Steve Herlocker, our Chief Marketing Officer here at Jakarta. If there are any other questions that we were unable to answer today and during today's session, we will definitely respond back to you directly after the event. We hope that you have gained valuable insight into the Jakarta Multi-Channel Agent Desktop and how easily you can utilize it to enhance your organization's customer service. A replay of the event will soon be available on Jakarta.com. And if you would like a copy of today's slide decks, please contact me directly at ljudge at Jakarta.com. That's L-J-U-D-G-E at Jakarta.com. Once again, thank you for attending today. Please visit us at Jakarta.com and have a wonderful day. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.